As the final leaves cling to the autumn trees, a youngster's imagination can take them as high as the moon. There is a certain sparkle in their eyes, an excitement about a time of year when dreams and fantasies can come true. But more importantly, it's the season for hoops. From the inner cities to rural landscapes throughout the land, basketballs bounce and competition reigns as if every game was for the national championship. For with a little imagination, a kid can pretend to be any player in the game of his life. kids from Michigan are going to play some kids from Duke in a basketball game that just happens to be a rematch of the national championship. And when the game is over, tonight's heroes will fill the imaginations of kids throughout the land. champion Blue Devils of Duke. Tonight, they entertain number one Michigan. Yes, they are kids, but do you remember how things were always magnified when you were young? Hello, everyone. I am Tim Brando. The college basketball world needs no magnifying glass to underscore the importance of this December matchup. Interestingly, both teams have done their best this past week to downplay the importance of this game, and that was somewhat expected. But we will see some questions answered tonight. For Michigan, the sophomore slump that has been predicted for them by many a scribe around the country, they'll have an answer. Where Duke is concerned, how will they adjust to life without Leitner? Christian Leitner is gone. Enter Cherokee Parks. And unlike both Danny Ferry and Christian Leitner, he's a true pivot that will play with his back to the basket and will no doubt change the offensive makeup of this team. And certainly pressure is a factor. Michigan was something to prove, and according to Grant Hill, though they are veterans, they have a lot to prove with the game in Cameron Indoor Stadium. You know, we're going to go out there and play like we have something to prove. Uh, I know they're going to play that way because they lost to us twice last year. And we're going to go out there and let them know and let everybody else know that, hey, what happened last year, the two games against Michigan wasn't a fluke. What happened the last two years wasn't a fluke, that we're here for good. And with Christian and Brian gone, we're still a good team. We're still able to contend for a championship. to be your host tonight. Boy, do we have a plethora of talent involved in our telecast, including Bucky Waters. And the old coach says this game will be determined in the backcourt. Thank you, Tim. Tonight, we're really looking forward to great front court play, Thunder Dunks talent galore. But the critical matchup when this game is in the balance is going to come from the backcourt. It's going to be Jalen Rose versus Bobby Hurley. When you look at this matchup initially, it's Bambi versus Godzilla. Bambi, of course, is a pretty tough customer. Played all 45 minutes in Ann Arbor last year, scored 25 points, and Duke won in overtime. These two guys know each other well. But offense isn't the problem here. With the great front court of Michigan, Hurley's big job tonight is defense. And guarding Jalen Rose or Jimmy King, whoever, is a strong point guard for the Wolverines. In this area, Hurley at six foot can take lots of chances. It's his comfort zone. But once the ball gets over half court, the critical thing is to get the ball off the top of the key. Both of those big guards can feed down inside and just kill Duke. So one is get him off the top. Two, get him to give up the ball. Once giving up the ball, though, Hurley has to be concerned about being posted up. 
And here, Duke's pressure on the wings will be critical to saving Hurley from getting that isolation one-on-one. -on -one. And third, of course, whenever possible, force Rose to the right. It's not his strength. And the fourth thing is, he can't foul. Both Rose and Hurley had four fouls in the NCAA championship game. Both these teams need those two guys when it counts. All right, Bucky, and this is the other major factor, the Cameron Crazies. More pregame festivities after this word from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. A, a further example of how important this game is is who we have in the booth. Let's go to Tim Brad and Bill Raftery. Gentlemen. All right, Tim, thank you very much. All week we've heard the coaches say this game is not crucial, it's not critical. Instead, it's an indicator. But I'll guarantee you, these players can feel that pressure. I'm wondering if there's more pressure on the Fab Five, Bill, because they're 0-2 against Duke. Well, Duke has the banners. They can relax a little bit and learn. Of course, Michigan, a lot to prove to the country and the rest of the basketball world. Michigan, I think, has to use their power game, reverse the ball on offense, and don't break down on one-to-one -one if they're going to hang in there. All right, let's take a look at the Samsonite keys to the game. Concentration and attack mentality bill explain it well concentration the team that does generally wins the game the longer period of time here nice offensive play the finish but then the enthusiasm youthful exuberance rejoicing and duke would like to punish them at that critical time with a big basket the attacking mentality good defensive pressure leading to outlets hurley the pass and a great finish by hill you'll see a lot of that all right the time has come we'll let you meet the players and have the opening tip right after these messages stay with us they're partying at cameron indoor stadium at duke nine of the starters from the april 6 national title game in minneapolis are here tonight and for the wendy starting lineups here is dr art chandler Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Duke University's Cameron Indoor Stadium for tonight's ball game between the University of Michigan Wolverines and your Duke University Blue Devils. Now let's meet the starting lineups. First, for the Wolverines of the University of Michigan, a 6'9 sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number four, Chris Weber. A 6'6 sophomore from Austin, Texas, number 21, Ray Jackson. A 6'9, a sophomore from Chicago, Illinois, number 25, Jawan Howard. A 6'5 and a sophomore from Plano, Texas, number 24, Jimmy King. And a 6'8", and a sophomore from Detroit, Michigan, number five, Jalen Rose. Your head coach, Mr. Steve Fisher. And now the starting lineups for your Blue Devils. At 6'8", a junior from Reston, Virginia, number 33, Grant Hill. A 6'8 junior from Mobile, Alabama, number 21, Antonio Lang. Standing 6'11 and a sophomore from Huntington Beach, California, number 44, Cherokee Parks. A 6'5 senior from Lancaster, Texas, number 12, Thomas Hill. And at 6 feet and a junior from Jersey City, New Jersey, Number 11, Bobby Hurley. Your head coach, Mr. Mike Krzyzewski. Both coaches feel the Duke faithful and Cameron will be an asset to the Blue Devils. But I want you to take a look and listen to what they say about Michigan. Cameron will not intimidate Michigan. Those kids have been in too many good situations. Uh, what it will do, it will excite them also. And I think it sets the stage for both teams being at a, a top level of intensity. Uh, again, the main way it can help us is not to let us know that we're tired or not to let us lose. Uh, but it won't intimidate Michigan. It will excite Michigan. Until you get here and get the flavor and feel of it, you don't know exactly what it is. Uh, we've We've done a pretty good job of being able to allow the, the home crowd on the road to help us play better. And I want to make sure we don't take it personal when they start calling us baldy and, and some of the things that they'll, uh, they'll come up with. But I'm anxious to see how we respond to this kind of a crowd.
Steve Fisher can get away with that with that full head of hair. Yes, he can. But this is as wild as I've been, too, in my brief career to be. The officials is Ed Hightower. In the middle, Steve Wilmer. And to the right of the screen, Tommy O'Neill. The Michigan Wolverines ranked number one in the nation. They beat Rice 75-71. Duke is ranked fourth. They're 1-0, beat Canisius 110-62, and you see their series record. Duke leads that series 9-4, winning both games last year, 88-85 in overtime and 71-51 in the title game. Opening tip controlled by Duke. Michigan man to man. This is Parks, and he'll be tested tonight way out front, back to Thomas Hill. Hill penetrates, shoots off the iron, rebound. Grant Hill, yes. Showing great aggression on the glass. Michigan's got to contain them there. Weber way out front, inside to Howard. We're tied. Do a nice job of feeding the post in from the top. Very difficult to defend. Bill, we want to talk about the matchup of Hurley and Rose, and then defensively what Michigan does. Grant Hill with the turnaround, and it'll be Duke basketball. I think Hurley's personality is in the open floor. If they can get the break going, all of a sudden he's got the ability to come down in the set offense and do some damage, shoot the three or turn the corner. Point I'm making, though, Michigan counters with King on Hurley. Here's Thomas Hill with the pump fake, banks it in. Michigan on the break, throws it away. Turnover number one. Keep in mind now, the Michigan Wolverines had 17 turnovers in the win over Rice. But the coaching staff looks at that positively and says that's half as many as we had in the first game last year. They got Lang, not a good foul, away from the basket, not setting up a good pick. But in listening to Steve well, Fisher during the week on a conference call, he said they've got to shoot free throws and value the ball a lot more. And he said all week he wasn't concerned about coming in here. This is a growth situation for his club, but they've got to maintain good balance with the basketball. Rose on Hurley, top of the key. Don't take bad shots and start the break. Rose lost his footing, and that's turnover number two. Now Jackson didn't wait for him to post up, Tim. You gotta wait, let him settle if you're gonna take advantage of the size differential. Now each game has a personality. The problem with Michigan is they have a team of personalities. Which one will surface? Lang penetrates right side, loses the ball, and a whistle and a foul, and this will be against Cherokee Parks, his first. Duke looks active on the glass, and I, you mentioned Parks outside. In the activity area down low, they don't put a body on him. He's liable to come in and finish a couple of those off, but he can make that 15-footer. Weber better come out on him. Cherokee Parks played 13 minutes in the title game, and that's three points. Oh, inside the Weber. You got to see him and take his legs away. He does make some noise. Timothy. Tied at four. Jackson knocks it away from Grant Hill. It'll be doubles ball. How familiar is that baseline drive by Grant Hill in the tournament? He did it beautifully, but here Parks commits totally and no help in the back there to assist. Hill for three. He has five of Duke's seven points. Got to reverse the ball. Let people touch it and don't break down. It's a nice back cut. And the foul. The foul is on Thomas Hill. <laughs> Timmy, they'd be getting a stretcher for both of us on that turn. Jackson caught it. You see the denial. They're looking for support. It's a tad late, but acrobatic, yes, and a good-looking finish. Ray Jackson will take his first free throws of the year. Did not go to the line against Rice. He only had four points in that game. Could be the most unsung of the Fab Five. And this foul will go against Weber. 
and listened to him here in Canada. But they wanted him here, didn't they? That's the mistake he made, but that's one of the cheap variety. He normally gets one or two to get him in trouble in racing the ball up the floor. He's liable to pick up a charge. He's got to play within himself. Don't commit early, silly foul. Early on King goes around him. All foul and still hits it. The kid is tough. He competes. Hurley's first bucket of the day. Tough switch early on Howard. Lang out of bounds. It'll be Michigan ball. Now if you watch the action, they give it to Duke. I thought he was out of bounds. They had established inbounds. And now they reverse the call, and they do give it back to Michigan. Well, Steve is mild-mannered and a gentleman, but he lets it be known when he's correct. Good call, Coach Rafferty. Well, he didn't many when I was on the sideline. <laughs> but Duke aggressive, they communicate, and that's the key in man-to-man -man defense. Let one another know and be there to assist. Hurley. Oh, to Thomas Hill. sudden the back cuts are there and Duke too far a distance to assist. This isn't really great in the open floor. Cherokee Parks has it knocked away by Weber. This is Lang. And he's fouled by Jawan Howard. His first. 16-29 to go the first half. Tim Brandt, Bill Raftery with you. It is 11-8 Duke, the rematch of the national championship game. Uh, the only pass he could make, he thought he may have been fouled, got rid of it before any damage. The rest, a strong sent it in. Teal. Lang bangs it hard off the iron. The making a free throw important for Duke to set up the pressure. Bucky mentioned Hurley on the basketball. It may start three-quarter court, makes them turn. That way, the defensive pressure can set. It's a four-point lead for the Blue Devils. Jackson tries to get the pick. It looks back door and gets it. Gorgeous. The lay-in by King. Offensive. They wipe the goal out. Great attention underneath. But I'm impressed with Michigan going without the basketball. They put the points on the board. Now they take them back off. The bucket's no good. So they'll drive the floor and get things going. Although they're not low post oriented, the cuts are giving them easy attempts at the goal. Up top, Grant Hill. What a spectacular game Hill had in the opener. 28 points. Great oh, look at this pass to Parks. His first basket. It's early, but he's magnificent. The end of the year could get all the awards. King on the rush to Jackson. Great look by King. Jackson with a discard. Hurley loses the ball down low. Here come the Wolverines. It's a three-on-one. Jackson left side. No bucket. Offensive. Two cheap ones. He should have given it up. Let the guards make the play, Tim. Chris Weber, two personals. And we'll be back after this word from Wendy's. Design, good deployment, but give it up, big fella. And if you keep it and then pass late, you've lost full control of your body weight. Something Duke has prepared for, has seen happen in tape, and it negates a terrific thrust. And a guy who hasn't really established but opens up to the ball, beneficiary of great penetration, Parks. And he can shoot it down there so he can cause some damage when Weber goes out. So Riley in. Chris. Chris Weber does sit down with those two personals you talked about. 
So in comes Eric Riley, seven foot, 245 pound senior. And there is Weber. It's 14 to 10, Duke, 15 25, remaining in the first half. Early on the left elbow to Thomas Hill, has it blocked. Parks. Underneath Lang. Parks. Yes. He's the Tiger. Not too many people in the country know how aggressive he can be. Different style than Christian, but effective. Nice help here by Parks. This is Rose with a soft jumper. Jaron Rose. Smooth, isn't he? Awfully, awfully talented. All five of them are, Bill. Grant Hill walks. He knew it. No complaints. Free flow motion is the Duke offense. They run doubles, as you saw, the last jump shot on the top. They run some stacks and staggered screens, but it's all loose, not regimented. Here's the post up by Rose. Howard at the top. Oh, look at this tough shot. Fought through the block and made the jumper. He now has six points to Rose, and it's a two-point game. Lang walks. Nice ball, Tim. You notice Michigan is playing and not much of the whooping. I think you've got to immerse yourself in a game as important as this. Let the nonsense prevail when it's over. Not when it's a contest. Although they say that motivates them. That didn't in the final four. Another Michigan turnover. That's five, and here comes Hurley. He pushes it hard, shoots the three. Fearless. That's what Mike's favorite word in describing Bobby Hurley. 19-14 Duke. Because he's got to let him play his game, let him be fearless. Tennessee, the coaches to take it back. And this will be on Antonio Lang. That's his second. The biggest lead for Duke was six points. It's now 19-14. We have 13-48 remaining first half. Eric Meek comes into the ball game, and Antonio Lang will sit down with those two persons. Meek is an interesting player, Bill. 6'10", 240-pound sophomore. He's from Escondido, California. I get the kind of a kid that can support Parks. I mean, he's a lot better. A lot of people haven't seen him. I haven't seen him in a high five America game. Incidentally, against five Ukraines with a Russian coach. So pretty good range by King. There's an unsung guy, Tim. He's got an awful lot of talent. Does a lot of little things for this basketball team. They say Jimmy King is the best outside shooter. Incredible leaper. I do know that. And it's a two-point game. established Parks here. He's got to turn and take his guy. Parks on Riley. Cross court dangerous pass to Thomas Hill. Now when Lager got it down, they double teamed and he had those turnovers in the first. Look at this. Grant Hill in the back door alley-oop. What a pass by Hurley. Some feel for the game. Turnover number six. And again, Hurley pushes it. Thomas Hill, too hard. Rob Palenka pushes it. And Hurley, now they'll set up. Hurley right back with the pressure. You notice how they have the people at the three-point line, so when Hurley penetrates... Nice pass to King, can't convert. But finally, put in by King. Back cutting has been their success. Both clubs have four personal fouls, team fouls. Weber has two, and Antonio Lang has two. Cherokee Parks down low. Grant Hill. He's struggling a little bit right now, Bill. Mm -hmm. Get him going in the fast break. I think Michigan's done a much better job defensively. Staying at home on the dribbler. Rose over top of Hill. And Hurley takes it away from Riley. He'll take it all the way. And it'll be Duke ball. 
You know what amazes you the more you see Hurley? His speed. You never think of him as real quick, but he blows by people. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. Timmy, you've got to switch aggressively on the cut, particularly with a guy like Rose taking Hurley down low. Here, Parks switches, not aggressively, and then leaves the ball. And no, no, you've got to stay at home. The other end, we talked about free-flowing offense. Hurley sets the ball left. Nice back cut, eyes, coordination, and a great climax by Hill. 21 to 19, Duke. All five starters have scored for both teams. Michigan with seven turnovers and Duke with four. Did you ever try and tackle his dad? No, Calvin? I didn't. You know, it's... <laughs> I know you no. missed a few tackles in your play days at Marlin. I missed many. Weber is back into the ballgame for the Wolverines, and Monty Clark checks in for Duke. Not a bad jump shooter. This is Clark, 6'6", junior, and he is from Illinois. Hill, who can handle, ran the point when Hurley was hurt. I like a little grab. Can they sustain the man-to-man? -man? That's the question that will be answered. Michigan has been excellent. They've been paying attention. Can they stay in the defensive stance and help position? Grant Hill. Pretty good snatch by Riley. This is Riley. Back up top to Talley, who's checked in. Might as well use him if you put in. Strong move. Last touch by Palenka. It'll be Duke basketball. Weber reminds me of Buck Williams, an old Maryland great, with more offensive ability. He's one of the great rebounders, and that's a quote from Mike Krzyzewski in college basketball. Some interesting low post moves. That was not one of the better ones. That's an interesting comparison. Of course, Buck uses that body as well as anybody you'll see. This is Hurley on tally. Nice pump fake. Great step through. Bobby Hurley now has seven points, and it's 23 to 19, Blue Devils. Uh, Chuck Daly was telling me all these kids that played the development game, Hurley, Hill, and Weber. He told Willis Reed, don't spend the dime. They'll all be first. Don't waste any money. They'll all be the upper first round. Weber from way out front. A brick. Again, Hurley wants to push it. That is obviously part of the game plan. Well, he, what he does is you get into a different mismatch. You're playing in areas of four that you're uncomfortable in. Clark will turn around and comes up short. This is Palenka. Clark being very aggressive off the bench. Still straight up, man. A lot of depth on this Michigan team. Of course, Michael Talley. Forget it. Inside to Weber. What's happening, other than the back cuts, Weber's hiding on the baseline, doing a nice job presenting himself in the passing area. It's 23-21 Duke. The Blue Devils have led from the outset. Grant Hill. Trying to get him in the game a little bit, Tim. Still fighting with that jump shot. This will be last touch by Duke. It was kicked out by Eric Meek. And Antonio Lang comes back into the ball game. Cherokee Parks will come out. Grant Hill will come out. And Thomas Hill comes back in. Well, Mike Krzyzewski said something interesting, that each team develops on their own. And can the players step up and show their way of playing, their personality? And that's why I think Grant Hill will eventually shine. He's got a terrific jump shot. He's great at going to the goal, great with the ball. But sometimes you try and do it all in one evening. It doesn't work out. I think Grant Hill is a little bit frustrated right now. Two for six. Maybe this sit-out will help him. Mm -hmm. Get some composure. Lang with the long arms, tough match on Weber. They start the big guys high, and then they put them low. Weber's got his guy. Back to her cut. King, tough shot. Still makes it. He now has seven. We're tied at 23. A lot of poise, Jimmy King. Good post defense initially, now softens by Weber. 
Tally on Hurley. And the foul will go against Tally. Hurley does not need much room, does he, to turn that corner. Oh, Creative with the bounce. Be sure to stick around at halftime for the Raycom basketball preview special. Host Terry Gannon will take you on an in-depth look at the exciting college hoops coming up your way this season. The Raycom basketball preview special. Folks, don't miss it. We've had three ties, and now Bobby Hurley breaks that and makes it 24-23. Duke. them both he was seven for eight from the line in the first game he doesn't miss many no and it does set up their pressure as well that's nine now for hurley everything stems from him tim he's an aggressive kid defensively a nice good break once again king uh, under control he has nine points took it all the way himself and banked it in it's 25 25 the fourth tie of this ball game 8 43 to go first half a little side eyeballs at Tally. The look of disdain. Bobby was very quiet at practice the last couple of days. Had his game face on early. Walk. That's the good philosophy, though. We're getting the high-low going. Riley, unfortunately, gets caught up in traffic. Eight turnovers for Michigan. Early, I think the crowd now forcing it themselves. A look at Steve Fisher in his fourth year. He's won a national title and he's been to two championship games in four years. Now, PJ's not sending him too many cards, right? Took care of him up in Seattle. On the floor now is Jackson, Weber, Howard, King, and Rose for Michigan. This is Thomas Hill in the paint, and he's fouled. That's why they go to the foul line so much. They attack the defensive stance, not afraid to dribble, create pinches, and obviously they've got good step-up shooters, but the creativity, dribbling into ecstasy, and that's why their numbers outweigh the opponent at the end of the year. Incredible. This foul on Jackson, that is his first. first. And with the intensity of this game, when the players went down, you saw how quickly the officials were in to make sure nothing happened. Good crew, good control. Interesting, the officials from the Big Ten. Bobby Hurley, 12 points tonight. I would try and take Hurley out of the game below when he gives it up because Grand Hill's out of the game. They really don't have a playmaker. Jimmy King, don't let him get it back. Others have to lead. This is Meek. Had to adjust his shot. Nice job by Weber. Jimmy King working against Hurley. Skip pass to Howard. Turn around. Tries to rattle it in. Last touch by Duke. It'll be Michigan ball. 7.39 to go first half. It's a three-point Duke lead. We've had four ties, and it's 28-25 Duke. And when you come into a place like Cameron, you better be prepared. You notice the stools, although they've done this before. They get the stools away from the crowd. I, can, I remember years ago playing at Georgetown. John had a priest meeting behind my bench and a band. And I, I took the chairs out near half court, and I was worn with a technical foul, but you see Weber, Hurley said, this guy is a great warrior down low. I mean, the highest praise, and you can see Michigan philosophically doing the right thing. If they're able to convert, it could cause some foul problems for Duke. Weber has only four points. Keep in mind, he had big games against Duke both times they met last year. Oh, look at they line up back, look at this post up. Now, he's got some new moves. Howard inside, power move. King and Howard is fouled by Lang. And that will be three on a, Antonio Lang. Hurley is pesky down there. Almost oh, came up with a steal. But you can see all the dark shirts attacking the glass. And Michael's looking for some support. They're back in the Munder. You see four people. Now, what can happen out of this? Duke can get some fast breaks. But Mike wants the guards to assist down there. You can see the grab. It could have been anybody, huh? Three on Lang. 
Marty Clark returns to the lineup for the Blue Devils. Replaces so Clark will come back in, and Lang with three will be seated. Keep in mind, Lang started the final 18 games last year. He had that big game in the tournament you remember against Seton Hall where he had 16. I'm having a little trouble with the net here, too, to try to adjust it as the refs. A little free shot by Mike Krzyzewski. Look at this. When is the last time you saw this? It's like a pickup game. Well, the final four I saw it, but it was Duke cutting them down. They got them intertwined. While there's time out on the floor, let me tell you, this telecast is a copyrighted presentation of Raycom Incorporated. Any rebroadcast, retransmission, or other use of the video or audio portions of this program without the express prior written permission of Raycom is strictly forbidden. 7.29 to go first half. 28-25 Duke. Michigan has not led at all. Free throw woes. And Steve Fisher alluded to that. He said good teams shoot good free throws. He feels they have to improve in that category. Michigan shot only 62% from the line Tuesday night. Howard makes it a two-point game. Trying to establish Grant down low. Look at the double. He's got to find people. Grant Hill to Clark who bobbled it back to Parks how about him well, they respected the interior defense but they also know where their partners are good looking kicks Parks now has six points this is Rose smooth oh like they silk they stopped the chat with the crowd We've got to get back Mike Krzyzewski told his team he wanted to take advantage of that. If they celebrate, go by him. Here's Hill. He's struggling. Howard with the rebound. Good balance. King for three. Early at the other end. Well, he breaks you down, brings you back out. I mean, the early offense, I think, can be destructive if Duke wants to take advantage. One thing about Duke, they will continue to go to Grant Hill. This is Hurley for three. Look at that major league rebound. Shot clock has not been a factor. No, that's not going to play at all. Weber inside. This is the easy one. And this foul will be on whom? I don't know if they're going to give it to Howard. I thought Duke fouled. It is going to be on, on Howard. Howard. Foul was on number 25, Juwan Howard. And I'm they'll go down and shoot one and one. It's over the limit. I'm as puzzled as Steve is. He looks on with Curry Watson, who had coached Jalen Rose in high school. I think Howard is confused as well. Mm -hmm. He has two personals, you see. Too many opportunities, though. Duke is giving up to Michigan. You can see him attacking the glass. I also think you can establish offensively if you're Michigan anytime you want. They're not doing a good job pushing and banging people away from the painted area. Thomas Hill, a pretty good free throw shooter. Now Michigan is over the limit, so it's one and one. And he hits the first one. Duke is only three of its last 12 from the field, Bill. So they've hit a cold streak. Good inside defense, I think. They've been forced to kick it and make that jump shot, and they haven't stepped up. Part of that, too, has to be the way Grant Hill is struggling right now. much out of their full court pressure backing up the half court and they must help the post people look at Parks caught already 32 28 Duke little zone 2 3 years ago he would deny the existence of his own Rose has it knocked away it's a three on two for the Devils Hurley back to Thomas Hill to Clark 
great. Huh? Look at these guys down. To Hurley. Finally, Rose gets it back, and he has trouble with the handle. Oh, that was beautiful. Wild. <laughs> the only guys unhappy are the trainers when you see that. The zone got them an open floor opportunity. <laughs> and another one. Rose. And he loses it. What the heck has happened? Well, Parks gave it a shot. They never had full control. I like the zone. Uh, Michigan trying to penetrate. Not in the right spots twice now. So they have to get organized. And this is where Rose has to subjugate. Get control of the offense. Get people involved. These are the mental lapses we've talked about. Told you, Michigan had 17 turnovers against Rice. They have 10 here in the first half. Well, Michigan thus far very impressive on this end. Negating a lot of internal passing and pinching on the bounce. Duke slammed from the perimeter. in great oh, oh. nice move oh. slithery he has 11 nice advantage step Bosco shot is short and they're going to call a foul on Cherokee Parks away from the basketball that'll be two the whistle must have blown a lot earlier. We just couldn't hear it because they were out on the break. But the zone has been a problem. Mike would not use it early in his coaching career, but a weapon to rest and confuse Michigan right now. Eric Meek comes back into the game, and Cherokee Parks will go out. Don't lose much in height. Cherokee Parks a better shooter than Eric Meek, but Meek is a battler. Mm -hmm. Back man to man. Talking about with Meek. Early. Clark's in trouble. Now he would have taken that if he were in the flow, but he isn't. He isn't in the rhythm right now. How would you like to play street games with Hurley? Did you see him go down after that loose ball? Not much change on the corner of Jersey City with him around. Hill shot. No good. Picked off by Hill. Look out. He'll get it the easy way. Duke's biggest lead of the ball game. Never gets lost. Always aware. Great looking dish. The zone back to man to man has had some effect on Michigan, but uh, the cutting once again, early in the game, Michigan finding holes once again, Rose. Picking and rolling. Clark pops out. Nice pump fake. And Riley rejects him and is called for the foul. That'll be his first. They're not getting any easy ones under there, are they? It looked like a clean block. He must have gotten him with the body. Well, that's what they, that's the bailout, huh? Yeah. But anticipating inside, and that's taken away a lot of the personality of Duke on the offensive end. Riley comes out. Juwan Howard comes back in for the Wolverines. Hey, whoever out there, I'd be thinking about yanking him with the two. Instead of getting that third one on the road. He has a tendency on occasion to commit a silly one. Monty Clark now four for four from the free throw line this year. He played in 32 games last season. Hit over 50% of his shots. That's his first point of the night. Rattles it in and extends the Blue Devils lead to eight 
points with 2.38 to go in the half. They're on their feet in Cameron. Back at Cameron Indoor Stadium on the campus of Duke University, 38-30 Blue Devils. And they said this wasn't that important of a game. Watch this. Well, you don't get down and dirty if you don't love it nor care. And just anybody around it is on the pines. And you talk about loose ball drills and guys being thoroughly enmeshed in a game. Take these two clubs. And it is hot here. They paid the bill, the heating bill. I feel like I'm playing. <laughs> well, fortunately for both clubs, that's not true. Hey, we were teasing Mike Krzyzewski at practice yesterday about turning up the temperature when Duke plays in here because it is hot. But he says, no, it's just a small arena and they jam them in here. And all 9,314 are here tonight. King outside, nice jumper, can't get it to fall. And Rose is fouled by Grant Hill. That's his first. Now, there's a situation, Tim. You've been doing a good job getting it inside. Forget the jumper for a while. Keep the big guys happy. Let them touch the basketball. It's like having this man in the backfield. You've got to run him. Grant Hill's dad, one of the all-time NFL greats, Calvin Hill, now vice president of the Baltimore Orioles baseball organization. Duke's on a 13-5 run over the last four and a half minutes. Jalen Rose will try to help that. He's like Silk, this guy. Wolverine's leading scorer a year ago. You know what impresses me with him? He can turn it up a notch. He can accelerate. He'll glide and then blow by people. He's now two for five from the line tonight. And it's 38-31. You don't like dice light, but you might want to get Meek into the game or drive at Weber. Michigan being very aggressive defensively tonight. Cross court to Hurley. Got no sign of fatigue the latter stages of the half. Look at the help. All four in the painted area. Whew. Juwan Howard with the outlet pass to King. Look at this. King on Hill. Inside to Weber. Give and go. Great. Grant Hill pulls the rebound. Out to Hurley. Hurley got away with a charge. Yeah, he did. Weber. Oh, great basketball. Jack King. Big time fast break. A lot of touches. Fill in the lane and the completion. Jimmy King now has 11 points. And it's a five-point game with 1.15 to go in the first half. Part of Duke's attack is dribbling to the goal. And they haven't been making the kickout pass. Oh, Thomas Hill with a high lofter. Takes care of that. Under a minute. Get it in low, Michigan. Don't need throws up a brick. Oh, that can start a condo condominium. Relax. Not the kind of shot Steve Fisher wanted. And Hurley will set up for the final shot of the half. Thirty seconds. Hurley or Hill at the end, turning the corner, attracting and giving off or finishing on their own. Two-second differential between the game clock and the shot clock. Fifteen seconds to go. Thirteen on the shot clock. About eight. They'll start their move. Hurley working on King to Grant Hill. Look at this kid. No good. They're going to put one second back on the clock. That was some play. He doesn't know what they thought. Maybe they called the walk. What did they call? Well, they, they, uh, the clock expired. But they're putting one back on. He said one second differential on the shot clock. Well, I see what you're saying. They blew the whistle on the floor when they heard the shot clock go off. Actually, they should put another second back on then. Mm -hmm. So we're squared away. One second to go. Got a challenge. Just a long pass. Must be a back screen and somebody going for the goal.
Duke 40, Michigan 33. You're right, they're probably looking to get two up there. They put 222. Steve Fisher would like that. There we go. Important half, I think, for Michigan to get some composure, get legs under them, understand what they can get done. And I would like to think that the, the players will respond by going underneath and letting the big guys touch it. Good things have happened when that has occurred. And Hightower puts it back in play. The baseball pass the length. And that'll do it. Pretty interesting half of basketball. First half comes to a close. Duke, 40. Michigan, 33. We'll be back. The Pizza Hut Championship rematch is brought to you in part by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best hamburgers, and a whole lot more. By State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. And by U.S. Air, every time we fly, everything we do, U.S. Air begins with you. Under the microscope tonight. The young man who has admittedly come from a family of uh, counterculture, uh, self-admitted hippies, has played loose tonight against uh, Chris Weber. He's been in position to get easy ones underneath six points and two rebounds in the game. I think also noteworthy in the game is that Duke does have the lead, even though Grant Hill has been struggling tonight. Only three of nine from the floor. He has six points in the game. During the course of the first half, maybe the key move was Mike Krzyzewski deciding to go to a zone with about seven minutes left, and Bucky Waters was with me. I think you believe that Duke's bench was depleted, and maybe they were getting a little tired at one point, and that's why Coach K made the decision. No question, Tim. A uh, little leg weary there when Krzyzewski plays zone. He's got a darn good reason. An amazing half in a lot of ways. The stars, Grant Hill and Chris Weber, had 10 points between them. And I think we can look for a huge second half from them. Bobby Hurley, as advertised, the heart, the soul, the engine of Duke. Without them, they're in big trouble. Tim? All right. Thank you, Bucky. Coming up at halftime, we've got plenty to tell you about. We've got scores from around the country, a number of other major games taking place earlier today, some that are ongoing right now. All of that is our coverage continues from Durham after this. Terry, just to further underscore what you already mentioned, 450-plus games on Raycom seen throughout different regions of the country all coming your way this basketball season. A lot more coming your way from Durham when we continue with the Wolves and the Devils from Cameron Indoor in a moment. The Pizza Hut Championship rematch is brought to you in part by Wendy's Old Fashioned Hamburgers, the best hamburgers, and a whole lot more. By Haynes Men's Underwear. Just wait till we get our Haynes on you. By AT&T, the right choice. And by Visa. Here at Cameron Indoor Stadium, they don't take any prisoners, and they don't take American Express. Visa is everywhere you want it to be. Start of the second half, Michigan and Duke. And the Blue Devils lead it 40 to 33. Tim Brant and Bill Raftery with you from Cameron Indoor Stadium. And it is jammed, 9,314 strong. And we're up in the rafters. And it is hot up here, Raft. It sure is. Duke, man to man. A little hotter down there with the competition. King shot, partially blocked. Grant Hill comes down with it to Hurley. First half. Most of the scoring came from the guards, the perimeter, the outside guys. The superstars, Grant Hill and Chris Weber, non-factors. Weber with four, Grant Hill with just six points. Oh, Cherokee Parks backs it in. They, they, they got to get him established down there. He's got some offensive ability. Take it to the big fella. He has eight points now. He was seven for seven in the first game. And this would be a foul against Duke, a blocking on Hurley. Take a look at the Haynes halftime statistics. The shooting by both clubs is not very strong. The difference on the free throw line and the turnovers, of course. And, the, and what we mentioned, all the assists, 10 to Michigan, 5 for Duke to complement their high post passing. They're interchangeable parts. The big guy, particularly Weber, with four assists. So getting to the foul line important for Michigan as well. Jalen Rose and the paint. Weber has it taken away by Grant Hill. 
The only bench points in the ball game came from Monty Clark at the foul line. That's it. Hill. Michael not sleeping, huh? He's got to get him in the game. See if Grant gets off now after that start. He has eight points. Biggest lead of the game, 11 for Duke. That's that denial, coming out strong, stepping it up, forcing Michigan to catch the ball a further distance away to initiate their offense. What kind of come from behind club is Michigan on the road in an atmosphere like this, Bill? Well, you can be if you establish your big guys. I, I think they've got to, even though they start high, get them down on the box and let them handle the ball. A little penetration on occasion. Right now, they look rattled. Hurley with a great job, and he Rose tried to clear him out. Jalen Rose, a personal, that's his first personal. They roll, they're watching underneath the clearing out the swimming in the post. Tough, a competitive youngster, and understands the game. Talked about getting the big guys from Michigan involved. Weber, in the two, guy, two games last year, had to combine 41 points, 23 rebounds. Again. Here's Rose again. Frustration as the nudge. Hurley, who can frustrate you. Going for the screen away. You can see the bow. Timeout, Michigan. Michigan against Duke is being brought to you in part by Coors Cutter, non-alcoholic brew. They're rocking and rolling in this place. Thus far in the second half, Michigan 0 for 2 from the field. Rose picked up two quick personals, and the Wolverines have one turnover. Not a very good start to the second stanza. Now we talked about personality, wide open jumper for Hurley. Personality showing itself, losing composure as Rose did. That deters their progress. That's not good basketball, and it hurts Michigan. Inside to Riley, loses it. They do the right thing, though. You got to catch it. All passes aren't perfect. On the timeout, oh, Steve oh, Fisher oh, looking oh, to go oh, in oh, deep oh, and not oh, rewarded oh. for a good coaching goal. No, the possession arrow belongs to the Blue Devils. And he liked it. They paid attention, and that's part of learning. Part of this game as well. A little isolation, two-man basketball. Thomas Hill with a nice spin move in the paint. The bucket goes, and he's fouled. Palenka behind to me, and dead behind. Big game for Thomas Hill, 15 points. Right here, you've got to give him some assistance. A little late. You got to double quickly as soon as he catches it. Get size and the jumping ability negating the D. Remember last year, it was a three-point advantage with seven minutes to play in the title game. And then they went on a big 23-6 run Duke did down the stretch. Now, Fisher said they were down 17 at home. Their crowd got them back. We can't let that happen at Cameron. And uh, right now, they're in the throes of a drought. Hill throws up a hard shot, pulled down by Riley. We've got 17 minutes and 35 seconds to go. Blanket, a deep threat. They really harass the passer to the post. You'll see the guy free, and Duke doesn't let you make the pass. All right, they've run their play. What they've been doing after it doesn't there work, it is. they break down a one-on-one -on -one basketball. And that's exactly what's been killing them. Nice play inside by Jackson. Good and patience. gets the roll. <laughs> All of it. He's got some paint chips. Cuts it back to 11. Parks and Riley, and they get a little nickel dimer as Riley trying to three-quarter, but that's what they've got to do more of. Don't let the entry pass come in easily. 
That is going to be two on Riley. Right here, you see the passer is not contested out there. You've got to go out and play him. It's impossible to be a good post defender without some assistance. Pressure on the ball. Thomas Hill. Over top of Palenka and it's pulled down by Riley. Reverse to the big guy and then they run their screens. Box to box. Good move. Oh, the block from behind by Hill. And the foul. It looked like a good block from behind by Hill. Great anticipation. Uh, Riley, quicker decisions as the double comes. Right now he's got a triple, actually, and that is a difficult one to agree with. The block by Hill was good. The foul was called on Antonio Lang, and that is his fourth. So Tony Lang now goes out. Meek comes back into the ballgame. You see 52. I'm just going to call him Tony from now on. I tripped over on That's what they call Antonio. him. The kids call him and the coaches call him. Tony, a long arms, plays bigger. I got a little double post-up look now, Duke, with me going in the ball game. Real good hands down there. Their foul, sh foul shooting has definitely been shaking. Weber. Weber comes back in. Riley goes back out. They say Howard perhaps has the best work ethics of anybody on this Michigan team. He's the most skilled post player they have. Great concentration there. Michigan now just three for seven from the line. Uh, this is the end. They got to put it together. They haven't been able to turn fast breaks. But Michigan has cut the lead back to ten. Nice cut. Oh. Grant Hill fouled by Jackson. Size and strength. He said he got confidence from the dream team, Grand Hill. And the other thing he learned, he had to get stronger. He has bulked up. One thing Mike Krzyzewski preaches, find people when they're free, compliment them. The foot speed and strength. The kiss, not rewarded. Nice entry pass by Parks. Grant Hill, nine points now. Of course, Cherokee Park's the big question mark coming in. I think he's answered some of those questions here tonight. Very competitive. Thomas Hill with the big rebound and the putback. He may have gotten away with a clear out, too. But right here, not concentrating on that play. If it goes in deep, they've got to step at the passing lanes for Weber. That's the job. Polenka wide open. Now with the doubles, you've got to create an area on a lane for the big guys to kick it back out. Early. Tough shot, not a good one. Harsh. King. Oh. The follow once, the follow twice. Weber can't buy a basket. I believe it was King, Timmy, on the rip off me. It is King with the foul. And that's his second person. The sixth team foul against Michigan. So they've almost put themselves right back into the bonus situation. With plenty of time left and a good foul shooting team in Duke. Headed quite rapidly toward the double bonus. A lot of guys are standing up defensively. The big guys particularly for Michigan. That means Little Weber standing, tired, not in position to help. Oh, a nice drop step by Marks and a tough shot to make it 51 to 38. Didn't acknowledge the double. Did you see Hill help out there? Hurley competing. Marks here. You see Weber not in the stance. Not ready to play, and that's when you get fouls. Nice delivery, competitive move by Parks. I've got a feeling, Billy, that Michigan right now is on the brink. They are, and it's uh, right now good pressure on all the out. Five-second turnover. And now a little disgusted with one another, and what they've got to do to be good is straighten their act out with one another. 
they are confused. Jackson said he wanted the timeout, lost his composure for a second. Great talent, but you've got to suppress selfishness and attitudes. You've got to have a team personality that cares for one another. Grant Hill, his shot is too hard. And I think Duke right now can feel Michigan is on the ropes. Oh, this is a great team with great talent. They, they can hang in on their talent, but they've got to coordinate and appreciate one another. King cuts it back to 11. And also respect the opponent. That's a key thing. That's why the Wolfen takes you out of your game when you're playing a real good club. Just play. Let your actions speak. Weber in a one-man zone in there. Thomas Hill, air ball. Here come the Wolverines. Nice, nice look. Duke twice now, not back. Tardy. Grand Hill and a whistle. They're going to call Hill for the foul. Maybe they gave it to Meek. It was the trail official making the call. Eddie oh, Hightower, right. who was underneath, did not make the call. You're right. They gave it to Hill. They are attacking the glass with abandon right now, but they're getting softer shots, which are easily tipped back up or controlled. Tommy O'Neill, the back official, had a better view of it than Ed Hightower, and he made the call. That's the second on Hill. That is a talent talking to his coach, though. Got to play every minute, though. As good as you are, guys are not going to just show up and step back. You've got to hustle and perform. And most nights he can get away with it. That's the problem, I think. Great talent like Weber. Michigan just three for eight at the free throw line tonight. Harold. The knock back on D. Clark, great pass by Hurley, fouled by Howard, and they're rolling in Cameron. One of the great long passes. It was an easy one for Hurley. Fouls at number 25, Jawan Howard, his third personal foul, 17. He catches it and sees all nine. A feel for the game. When they played the Dream Team, the first time, the kids beat the Dream Team, Hurley's group. Chuck Daly, they played another 20 minutes, and uh, they played a little bit better. The third time, Hurley started to turn to the corner, and Chuck Daly called timeout, and the players said to Chuck, put the glove on Hurley, the glove being Michael Jordan. <laughs> High praise. For a great talent. It's a 14-point Duke lead. This foul will be called on Eric Meek. Foul was on Duke's number 50. That's only his first. His first. Foul situation is this. Michigan does have 17 fouls already. So they're over the limit. Duke has but four. It's a 14-point Blue Devil lead. We've got 1347 remaining in the game. Now, Bosco, a guy who spurts this team able to shoot the ball contribute in a silent fashion king howard vasco weber and rose on the floor for michigan Hurley, grant hill meek clark and thomas hill for the blue devils This is called away from the ball. It'll be on Grant Hill. That'll be his third. Two quick ones. But that's uh, one thing Mike said. He wasn't afraid to play Grant Hill on bigger people. That time on Weber. Grant Hill is third. shoot it. He follows his own shot and makes it a 12-point game. Six for Weber now. Now Weber in 
inside zone. Meek can screen to get himself free. They're not playing him. Meek should keep Weber active. Keep moving. He's in a one-man zone. Look at that. Clark. Fight for the rebound. Lusko's got it to King. He loses it to Hurley. Doesn't waste the dribble. Grant Hill. <laughs> Lack of concentration on the one that ignites a fast break for Duke. Twelve and a half minutes left. The biggest lead for the Blue Devils. guys out high now they go low Duke in the zone Rose penetrates nice floater huh? always under control had to dump off as well his size allows him to shoot over most guards he plays against more and more you see guys dribbling against the zone, don't you? It's, it's so effective. Hill at the top of Vasco. Grant Hill now with 13 points. He's alive. Weber wants it down on Meek. Vasco tries to get it. Almost, almost walked on that step back. Nice pass. There they go. Turn around by Howard. Patience, huh? Kick it around a little bit. It's the best I've seen from Michigan tonight. Both clubs so talented. They're tired right now, I think. This is pulling the plug. Rest the legs. The pace, obviously, is taken from them, but how about the heat? Amazing. So long soda tonight, huh? <laughs> Shot clock at 15. Now they got to be ready to play defense right now. A miss, they may have a fast break. They got a little blow. Grant Hill. Rebound, Rose. Crowd wanted a walk call. Pretty. Oh, uh, the king. And so it counters. Uh, Mike Krzyzewski <laughs> pulled the plug to rest his club. In a sense, assistant Michigan. The game is back to 10 points. This is for three. Well, Weber big on that. They're challenging a little bit now. Showing a little character here. Hold on. Look at me. <laughs> Look out below. Mike Krzyzewski says, I've seen enough. He wants a timeout. Ten minutes and 15 seconds to go. The lead now is just eight. We'll return after these messages. From your local stations, this is the Raycom Network. Michigan has pulled it back from a 14-point lead to eight with 10-15 to go in the ballgame. Well, everybody wants perfection, and Steve Fisher with a young team, five sophomores, incredible, but this is one particular play early where the concentration was lacking in Hurley, who sees everything takes advantage but all of a sudden Michigan has gotten into the flow of the game they reversed the ball kicked it to Bosco went to the box and got something good so character showing itself now sustaining it that's what Fisher is after if Michigan's gonna be the real thing this year over that last minute and a half Michigan outscored Duke six nothing There's that run you mentioned, and Hurley hasn't rested at all. Another important aspect of Mike Krzyzewski resting a little. Oh, look at this. Tony Lang with a great first step. Last touched by Weber. Now, Chris did it. He, he blocked the shot. Now he's got to tell Lang about it. it. It's like, just play. You're supposed to block the shot. Actually, I think I would like to see him start talking now. It might get him going. He really has not gotten into the flow tonight. 
Well, it's a generation gap, huh? <laughs> I see so many NBA games, though, and then once they get to a certain level of maturity, they just play. Good use of the body by Weber. Riding him out with the leg. He's going to get called for it, though. Early in the second half, 0 for 3 from the field. Shot clock at 6. Crowd helps him out, alerts him to that fact, and Grant Hill charges. Good call. Good call. Bosco came in silently, contributing the pass to the post. The step in there. Bill, that is now four on Grant Hill. And that was resting on the offense, and it hurt them again. The, the, the Hurley couldn't do anything, kicked at the hill. He had to force the issue to beat the shot clock. Weber trying to psych himself up at the other end, hitting himself in the head and talking to himself. The lead is eight. Blows the shot is short. Howard gets the rebound. He's not even coaching when he's doing that. That was a big trip. Don't be in a hurry, Michigan. Still plenty of time. Nine minutes to go. If Parks would scream, he'd get free. Weber paying attention to other areas once his man goes away. Parks with a lot of confidence now wants the ball on Weber. They get it to him. Good interior passing. King on the right side. That was actually tipped in by Thomas Hill. Great body control on the wing. Give Thomas Hill two on the Michigan legend. I'll uh, give it to King. Nice run right now. And the motion lackey by Duke. You might see a little more movement. There we go. Clark wide open. Michigan. Nice run by Bosco. And Bosco loses it. Great luck. Right through his hands. And the coaches say hits in the wrong spot. That one hit him in the hands, done the forehead. He has contributed, though. Great sprint. Just took his eyes off it. Good help here. Critical time in the ball game as we go under eight minutes. Parks has it taken away. Ball's on the floor. Steps. And they're going to call the foul. No. Hustle play by Clark. I thought at first they were going to call Clark with the foul. Instead, they called the walk against Michigan. 7.52 to go. It's a six-point game. Tonight's game is being brought to you in part by Coke. 7.52 to go. Duke, 58. Michigan 52. Duke's last basket came at 11 minutes and 50 seconds. So they've gone scoreless for the last four. Michigan's on an 8 nothing run. Duke now with Hill in the game. You might see them go to him a little bit. Thomas Hill, that is. And maybe establish Parks. I think Michigan steps up the defense a little bit more conscious, particularly on the perimeter. Hurley, Hill, Lang, Parks, and Clark are the five on the floor for Duke. Bobby Hurley. Wow. So much for that, huh? On Hill. Nice little rub, pick and roll out high, pick and stay by Parks for Hurley. Three quick ones. Jalen Rose working on Hurley. Shoots over top of him. Didn't need that. Fight for the ball. I believe the arrow belongs to Michigan. That's that quick one. They'll reverse the ball, look inside, make the Michigan defense the work a little bit. When they've done that, Michigan's come up with a favorable response. Keep in mind, Lang has four personals. Grant Hill has four personals for Duke. Back in the zone on the out of bounds. Quick step up by Howard. Oh, look to Weber. See a terrific interior passing team. Hands. Her 
early. Thomas Hill drifts to the right elbow. Uh, Kings worked hard on early. He's paying a lot of attention to him. They double on Hill. And he takes it back out. And Bobby being a little tired hasn't been able to turn the corner. Shot clock under 10. Hurley does it himself. Not a good shot, but the rebound underneath. Work, work. And they're calling Jackson with the push. And they were down to three seconds. Didn't hit anything. Tough, tough call. Foul is on number 21. Big philosophy is getting to that 10 for the two automatics for Duke. And that gives them number eight. So Thomas Hill will go to the line. He's shooting one and one. He has 17 points. Michigan just three of nine from the line. That's been a difference. Thomas Hill's played a marvelous game tonight. You know his dad, you know his dad, track mm -hmm. star in college, and now the assistant Oklahoma. athletic director at Oklahoma. He's had a great career here. Offensively, he's gotten better each year. Sixty-three fifty-four. Six and a half to go. Weber. Jackson can't get it. Jalen Rose now has it. Boys, nice post pass. Uh, nice pump fake by Wilson. That was a great look to the correct hand by Rose. Weber now is cooking. This is called on Hurley. Or is it? Courageous. He gets the goal. And he goes to the foul line, too. They call a step in. Of reaction. That is poor on Howard. I thought this was on Hurley. Yeah, I like the reaction defensively. That's a bang banger. You can argue all night either way. But courage. Did he have position? Fearless. You know, initially I thought he did, but it's one of those bang bangers. The way the official says it. Not much you can argue. Each guy wants it. Bobby Hurley's so tough. Replacing number four. And that makes it a 10-point lead. Bobby Hurley now with 18. What's great about Hurley is nobody asks you whether he can play in the NBA now. Everybody understands he's so creative, gets the job done, coordinates the team, and what internal courage, huh? Rose over top of Hurley. There's the height advantage. He's 6'8", so he's 6'8". Well. And Bobby rested just a little bit. They didn't really harass the passer to help him. Billy, Michigan hanging tough, just close enough. Showing some good signs, different trips. Look at Cherokee Park working inside. Going over the seven-footer. Riley let him set up too deep. Five and a half to go. So Rose fighting and Weber's there in the post. When he got Weber there, Rose should jump out into the corner. Let him have it. And they go to the weak side, strong to the goal. If this is on Lang, it's his fifth. And it is. Tony Lang will now sit down, and Eric Meek will replace him. Here's that number again, in case you missed it, to order Royal Blue, a video history of Duke basketball. Call 1-800-826-6363. So with 519 left in the ballgame, Lang sits down with five. Jackson goes to the line. Keep in mind, Grant Hill has four. And well rested, too. That's three for ten for Michigan at the line tonight. Number 32. That has been the biggest difference. Matt Jackson struggles there. The ball comes off funny. Uh, 
Bosco. Bosco comes back in for Michigan. Jackson will go out. And here's the full court pressure. This makes Hurley awfully tough. You start a fast break for him. Yesterday, Mike Krzyzewski says if they press, everybody go down. Yep, down the way. It up. And clear an area for him. it tonight. He'll go in the lane out of control and you can't take the charge on him. And more and more teams will do that as the season goes along. And how do you play him underneath when he settles? Awfully tough. Michael, aggressive. He was at Army when I first met him. Coaches the same way. Occasionally dresses the same way. He'll love to hear you say that. <laughs> They won there, and he had the same philosophy. And we, now he's got some players that are a little more talented. And he had some good ones there, too. No question but the fact the difference in this game tonight has been at the free throw line. As it is often with two. Weber to Jalen Rose. Back to Weber. penetration they find once again good interior passing they find Weber just able to convert actually a neck ball on one of the tips it's frustrating but they got to stick with it time now critical now look at the speed of Hurley you wouldn't know him looking at him King trying to stay up with him couldn't will melt the clock. They've been shortening the game the last 12 minutes. I think Mike feels they can't compete with the foul problems on the glass. And guys are a little bit tired. Duke has a 29-game home court win streak. They've won 49 of the last 50 here. And Hurley can't convert. Nobody back when he goes 1-4. Jalen Rose. And it's a seven-point game. Having trouble with the net again. It's interesting. Duke pretty good balancing it forward. Did not that time with Hurley going to the goal. 326 left in the ball game. It is Duke 70, Michigan 63. Live Tuesday night, December 29th at 9 Eastern time. Raycom presents the Freedom Bowl from the Big A in Anaheim, California. More great college bowl action from Raycom, the nation's leading sports programmer. Here's the quiz of the night for Bill Raftery. Uh-oh. Duke has won 73 non-conference games in a row. Their last loss was to whom in what year? Dawkins, Mallory, and Billis were on the team, believe it or not, and it was Louisville. In 1983. Peek out, that told me that. Mike's assistant, who 
helped us look at some tape and explain what they were attempting to do, as well as Steve Fisher giving us some insight. Had a chance to see them play Lou Ragnone, attorney, about two weeks ago, Michigan. And he didn't play the starters all together and mixed back, and they ended up losing to a semi-pro club. Duke breaks the press rather easily. And again, we'll use the clock. Really don't need this. Or will they? We didn't need that. And it went off Weber. Really, what has surprised you most in this game tonight? Uh, I'm very impressed how Michigan has been resilient. It looks like they're not doing the right thing. Then all of a sudden they'll gather themselves. I think defensively they've exerted themselves a lot more. I think they've got to concentrate inside defensively a lot more. That'll help them stay out of foul problems. And, and Duke using the clock quite a bit. They a the little respect, shortening the game, and resting their people. And Bobby Hurley out there every minute. The Duke bench players all just sitting down as the shot clock now goes to five. Hill with a turnaround, tough shot, and rebound goes to Weber. The Michigan bench players all on their feet, standing. Got to get to the foul line, so get it low or make a penetrating move. No, I don't need that. Jackson, don't need that. That gets you to be a color analyst. <laughs> nice pass to Clark ahead. <laughs> that ball was at the back line, so I think... Jalen Rose. It's a four on two. Flash charge. Power. Stops. King has a spot on the way. Do you believe a four on two? They cannot get the basket. Early to Clark. Get it out of there. And Jackson says, in your face. Uh, you see the heart of both these clubs. You wonder why they made the finals last year. No stepping back. Aggressive. Even then, the other end, you said, why did they miss the layup? I think it was pretty good defense and stripping by Thomas Hill. Block under two minutes. They don't want to foul now. Just play straight up. Down to 20. Just play your own guy. 70-63, Duke. And the Blue Devils turn it over. Great job defensively. Keeping Hurley away from the ball. And Mike quickly Time trying to reorganize. Get Hurley the ball. Let him run it. One and a half minutes to go. We'll return after these messages from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. 70-63 Duke. A minute and a half left. Michigan with two timeouts left. Duke with one. The play of the game, the Pizza Hut delivery of the game, Jalen Rose. One of the pretty outlets, strong completions. Your Pizza Hut delivery in the living room with that finish, too. Bill, during the timeout, you said Michigan hanging around, still time left. But they have not been strong from the free throw line. Well, that's the problem. They've got to score, get themselves organized. You mentioned they got the two timeout. I would save that. But you've got to keep Hurley away from the ball on your full court pressure. Jalen Rose for three. Say, I, I would get it inside. This foul called on Weber. Not that you have to hammer down seven, but you can make them pay inside. The kickback pass for the three is the way to go if the big guy doesn't have something. Not so sure that's what Steve Fisher wanted either. He can feel this one slipping away. Going to the line with two shots, number 33, Grant Hill. That three under duress is not as easy a shot as it is without anybody around you. And Rose being played with a hand up, unable to convert. Grant Hill at the line. He has 13 points tonight, six rebounds. And the Blue Devils now 15 for 18 from the free throw line. Uh, both coaches talked about learning something about their club. And I think they both can take a great deal away from this. Rob Palenka comes back into the ball game. Vosco goes out. Hill makes them both. So with 118 remaining, it's a nine-point lead for Duke. Palenka, three-point shooter in there. 
got to go in and out. Palenka shot too hard off the back of the rim. For three by King, and they immediately take a timeout. 57 seconds left. That long rebound's a killer. With a three-point shooter generally in the advantage. Billy, let's talk strategy. 57 seconds left. Michigan now with one timeout left. Duke with one timeout left. The differential, 72-66. Well, you're going to have to try for the gamble. Come up with the steal. Good, quick trap. Try and get your hands on it. And unfortunately, you got to stop the clock now. They get two shots. That's the misfortune of fouling all during the half. But that's what they're going to have to do. Try and come up with that good steal. And if not on the first one, say, okay, we're going to rotate on the next one. Make them lob it. Don't don't let them step through that trap. Don't let them dribble around it. Hide them from the floor. Make them loop and then get your quick people like Jackson, possibly Weber in the back, or Rose or Jackson or somebody of that nature in the back to step in and go. The two shots you talk of, 10 team fouls against Michigan. They're in the double bonus. Duke will try and get the ball. Bobby generally does positive things, and I would think that there'll be some face guarding on him. If they match up all over, Duke is not adverse to throwing the long pass either. That's if they step in on the ball, uh, the man passing it in and match up in the other four areas, Duke will fake and go long. And they're not afraid, they're fearless, much like Mike says earlier, and so is Mike Krzyzewski. Officials, I think. This whole place is rocking. They've handled it well. They leave the inbound passer, Grand Hill, alone. Get it to Parks, fouled immediately by King. Nice shot. I mean, they reacted, responded to what was said in the timeout. Oh, Steve's got to be happy. Stop the clock immediately. One second ticked off. Cherokee sure. Parks, number 44. So Cherokee Parks goes to the line. He's had a pretty strong night, 14 points. He will get better. They'll use him more. He'll have the confidence. Number Tough nose kind of player. And he's having fun. Bosco comes back in for Michigan. And Jackson will go out. Championships are won when your club can make free throws. He doesn't even have his glasses on. <laughs> Is that what they're there for? Push. Get to the foul line at worst at best. Along. Rose to King wide open for three. Can't get it to go. Weber with a follow. And they take Weber. their final timeout with 40 seconds left. <laughs> Down by five. Hanging around. Now we talked about Hart earlier. I think that uh, this Michigan club has shown when they are conscientious about their approach to detail, they get away from the little nuances of woofing and giving the opponent the business. They're pretty darn good. This is the extra pass. And at times they perform admirably in looking for others. And he's going to get better and better offensively. In the right spot, Abel and Ella. The 
rematch of the national championship game. Nine of the starters from that game are back. Only Christian Leitner is not. Those are impressive, aren't they? Mike Krzyzewski, four-time national coach of the year. Five straight Final Four, six of the last seven. And here, folks, with 40 seconds left, this is the closest it's been in the second half. Five points. They try to double Hill, but he gets around it. Had to give it. Jackson with the foul. And Thomas Hill will be shooting two. Oh, oh, oh. Steve Fisher's been doing the offense, defense coming back now with Weber and Howard. I'm surprised once Hurley, uh, they didn't want to foul certain people. I'm sure that's what happened. They didn't want to give it to him. Get it in other people's hands. You know how Bobby Nails does clutch free throws. I think Steve Fisher fairly frustrated because they did get the ball out of Hurley's hands. They doubled on Hill and let him out of the trap. He got around it. Duke 17 for 21 at the line. Well, you mentioned, is there any other place in the country like it? I guess the only one close might be Kansas, huh? People out there. But this atmosphere, to bring a team in as Fisher has, and to hang tough. I mean, they were oblivious to the comments and urgings of the group followers. Hill like ice. We got a big kick out of Steve Fisher when he came in yesterday. Pressure in this game. His biggest concern was where his wife was going to sit. <laughs> Well, that's the difference between both of us. My wife knew the result. She usually stayed home. <laughs> he was marking the number down. Oh. <laughs> Score quickly. You need long passes. Got to get your feet set quickly. Under 30. King fires for three. Air ball. Piece. Somebody got a piece, I think. Good. They do a good job refereeing here. Jalen Rose said there was a piece, and now they reverse the call. Good call. And give it back to the Wolverines. 21 seconds left in this ball game. Pop to the corner for the quicker. Quick one. Jalen Rose falling out of bounds. Clark with the rebound and the foul on Bosco. This one is over. I do believe. Well, it's December. But when you talk about education, it's a process. And when you take this one back home, look at these kids. They waited outside patiently for this one. They started pumping tents outside of Cameron Indoor Stadium November 27th, and they stayed there to make sure they got in. Guess they study during the daytime. You know, they can't leave their tents, or they have to go to the end of the line. Great training at these institutions of higher learning. But when you think of it, going back to Michigan now, there's a lot to grow on for Steve Fisher. I think this is a, look at the smile, well, he knows it's over. And he's taking a lot of heat from this group for last year and probably down there tonight a little. 77-68 with 15 seconds to go. Should have shot it. King gets it back out, pumps, shoots, short. Three, two, will Hurley cap it?
It is Bedlam here at Cameron Indoor Stadium. Duke is number four, but they're moving up with a bullet after knocking off the number one Michigan Wolverines in the national championship rematch. Hello again, I am Tim Brando. It's been a pleasure to host this one for you. We mentioned at the top of the show, Cherokee Parks would be under a microscope. A little footnote. Last year, Christian Leitner had 19 points in 36 minutes. Tonight, Cherokee Parks had 15 points, playing better than 30 minutes. So he came through in the clutch. Bobby Hurley still the Iron Man, playing all 40 minutes tonight, and never was he beleaguered through the course of the game. Let's go now to Bucky Waters, who has Thomas Hill and Bobby Hurley. Thank you, Tim. 40-minute man, Bobby Hurley. You got him off to a great start, and you just wouldn't let him lose. Yeah, we were real confident coming in. Uh, they were obviously confident with their words. Uh, but we were, comf we were confident with our play tonight. That's what mattered. Thomas, coach, was very strong uh, all week about not talking, not celebrating. But you almost had to at the end of this one, didn't you? Yeah, I think, I think we did a great job as a team at staying focused and really not letting the crowd and the surroundings get to us. We, we kept our game plan, and we executed well. All right, playing the big guard, Jalen Rose. You had a lot of experience with Walt Williams. Yeah, it was uh, it's tough playing a guy like that. He could really shoot over me, but uh, I tried to frustrate him a little bit with my ball pressure and uh, use my quickness. Cherokee Parks, big. Great performance, I tell you. He uh, put some numbers on the board for us, head-to-head -head against Chris Webber. He played a great game. The seniors did it. They struggled early. They hung in there. Tim Brando. All right, Bucky, you do have to give credit to Steve Fisher's team. I mean, after all, this team came up big at a point in time when they were ready to be blown out in the second half. Jalen Rose, for a brief time, lost his composure. Chris Weber, interestingly, did not start the second half of this game after picking up a couple of cheap fouls, really a non-factor until about the 10-minute mark of the second half. It was at that point the Wolverines mounted an 8-0 run and at one point cut it down to 5. Stay with us. More post-game activities continue after this word from your local stations. This is the Raycom Network. The Duke Blue Devils. 79 the michigan wolverines 68 the devils are now 2-0 and oh. the wolverines after beating rice are now one and one and there you see the story the difference really at the stripe 17 more for the blue devils and only four of 11 for the wolverines this is something i'm sure steve fisher will take a long hard look at after this one is over on the boards the wolverines got the job done 44 to 33 but again the turnovers negated that they committed 19 during the course of the game and those cheap turnovers the early turnovers were the factor it allowed duke to control tempo through the rest of the ball game one old duke coach with a current coach and he's a great one let's go back to bucky waters mike no one could really get in gear tonight but uh you know it was a great basketball game strictly from effort well you're, you're not going to score easy buckets tonight. I mean, there are too many good players out there. So, to me, it was a great basketball game because both teams played so hard. And two kids for us really came of age, Cherokee Parks and Marty Clark. And then our little guy, Bobby Hurley, it was a tremendous game by Bobby Hurley. Uh, I mean, he, he hit that big three when we were struggling. And then just 40 minutes, Iron Man, and uh, that's why I'm a good coach. <laughs> <laughs> because I, a good like him. The icing on the cake was to get a win like this with Grant Hill really not going on all cylinders. Well, and, and the foul trouble, Bucky. You know, like, we uh, we need Tony Lang in there. Tony Lang's a good player, and then Grant was frustrated a little bit. And, hey, he's playing against big-time players. So we had two of our key guys out in critical stretches, and Eric Meek stepped up also. You said you didn't want them to celebrate, but th they couldn't be restrained. Well, it was nice, and I'm, I'm glad for our students because they really gave us a big boost. Congratulations. Thank you. Tim? You know, they say great coaches know when to make adjustments. Krzyzewski made an adjustment. He went zone late in the first half. It paid dividends and has helped him win a couple of titles. We'll be right back. Back in Cameron Indoor Stadium where Duke knocks off number one Michigan by a final score of 79 to 68. To sustain greatness takes a lot. And I think Bill Raftery and Tim Brandt will agree that the Blue Devils are once again proving that they do not grow complacent, though they may have exceeded their dreams by winning two back-to-back -back national titles. Tim and Billy? 
No, I still, Tim, don't believe when they said this was not a critical ball game. There was a tremendous amount of pressure and intensity in this building that you could feel. And your final impressions? Well, sustaining greatness, I, I just think it's the attack philosophy of Mike Krzyzewski. Getting to the foul line is not easy. But when you penetrate, when you're aggressive defensively, good things happen in the open floor. And just as Mike mentioned, with Bobby Hurley, you become a wonderful coach, great leader, and uh, just a terrific distributor of the basketball. Tremendous talent on both sides. I think a little more discipline tonight on the Duke sideline. And, of course, the free throws, the biggest difference. And I think Michigan, too, I mean, you have to admire them. They looked like they were out of it. They came back. They had poise. I think they'll pick up a lot of interesting things that will make them tough to beat. They've got great inside people. Use them. Let them get to the foul line. They'll, they'll be a threat, I think, in that Big Ten conference, as it, well as the final picture. It's been fun, partner. It has been. Good to be back with you, Tim. All right. Let's go back downstairs now. Here's Tim Brando. All right, Tim, thank you very much. A real key in this ballgame, the play of Bobby Hurley. But as we mentioned, the one noticeable change cosmetically for both of these teams going into this game was Cherokee Parks. He played with his back to the basket, but he also came up big when facing the basket from time to time. And he negated the play of Chris Weber to a point at which Steve Fisher decided to sit him to start the second half, although he only had two fouls. You have to credit Jawan Howard for taking up the slack and also the play of Riley off of the bench. Michigan appeared to be deep. They appeared to come together, and that's something Steve Fisher can call upon as the Big Ten season gets underway in what is a very powerful conference. For Duke, their bench will have to improve if they are to win the ACC, but with Bobby Hurley playing for 40, he will make a difference. For Tim Brandt, Bill Raftery, Bucky Waters, our entire Raycom sports crew, this is Tim Brando saying so long from venerable Cameron Indoor Stadium.